Mr. Thompson here. We're looking at U.S. History Standard 9, evaluate key events, issues, and individuals related to the Civil War. In particular, we're looking at Part C of that standard, examine the influences of Ulysses S. Grant, Robert E. Lee, Thomas Stonewall Jackson, William T. Sherman, and Jefferson Davis. The Civil War was conducted through the leadership of some very successful military and political leaders. At the beginning of the Civil War, the Confederacy had the advantage in terms of military leadership. Commanders on both sides were actually pretty familiar with one another uh, because they had either trained together at West Point Military Academy or served together uh, during the Mexican War. Lincoln was frustrated early on in the war by his Union commander's inability to end the war quickly. Grant and Sherman finally emerged as the aggressive commanders that Lincoln was looking to promote. The Confederate commander, Robert E. Lee, was thought to be one of the most capable military men in the United States. He was even offered a top position in the U.S. Army when the Civil War broke out. However, Lee resigned uh, when his home state of Virginia seceded and joined the Confederacy. Lee's influence on the war was one of strong military leadership. Given all the disadvantages that the Confederate forces faced, Lee was able to effectively craft these military strategies that often withstood uh, larger Union armies and with less supplies. General Thomas Stonewall Jackson was considered a brilliant military tactician and was a great commander for Robert E. Lee's Confederate Army. He led his forces to victory at both battles of Bull Run. Like Lee, he was very skilled at maneuvering his forces in the field against opponents that were typically larger and better equipped. Jackson was shot at the Battle of Chancellorsville in 1863 and died a few days later. His death was a tremendous loss to General Lee and the Confederate Army. General Ulysses S. Grant was promoted to full command of the Union Army in March 1864. He had demonstrated his skill and aggressive approach through battles in the difficult campaigns in the West. One of his greatest successes uh, that earned him the promotion was at the Siege of Vicksburg. His hard-fought victory to control the Mississippi River had achieved one of the main military objectives of the Union's Anaconda Plan. The Union wanted to split the Confederacy to restrict uh, their ability to mobilize forces. Grant's victory at Vicksburg had achieved that goal. Robert E. Lee ultimately surrendered to General Grant at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia April 9th, 1865 to end the war. Just as Ulysses S. Grant had been noticed for his aggressive approach, so too was General William T. Sherman. Grant and Sherman had fought together in the western campaigns of Shiloh and Vicksburg. When Grant was given full command of the Union Army, Sherman was also promoted to lead the forces in the west. Sherman is noted for capturing the key Confederate city of Atlanta and subsequently leading the march to the sea through Georgia. Sherman's influence on the outcome of the war 
was to essentially break down the Confederate will to fight uh, through the widespread destruction of property on his march through Georgia and the Carolinas. Jefferson Davis was not a military commander in the field, but was the president of the Confederate States of America. Davis did uh, possess a military background, having graduated from West Point. He was also a well-respected senator from Mississippi before the Civil War began. Davis was unable to secure for the Confederacy a diplomatic alliance with European countries. He was also at odds with many Confederate states governors uh, regarding his war plans that strained uh, the already scarce resources of the South. Davis's counterpart, Abraham Lincoln, proved to be a more capable political leader during the Civil War. 